I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. A special welcome to our visitors. And if you're looking for a church home, we pray to consider St. John. Uh, just a few announcements this morning. Uh, Jimmy Caskey's surgery went very well. Uh, he was released and came home on the 25th, and he's recuperating at home. And we need to keep Jimmy in our prayers. Uh, he's recuperating, but this surgery was just sort of a cleanup surgery. One of they went in and cleaned up a bunch of scar tissue and so forth to prepare for the next surgery. Uh, he's having major back surgery on the 9th of December, so please keep him in your prayers, if you would. Uh, I was informed this morning that Betty Jo Hound has moved. She's now at Twin Pines. Uh, I guess she had fallen and went to the hospital, and when she reached out of the hospital, she chose to go to Twin Pines instead of where she was at. So please keep Betty Jo in your prayers. To my knowledge, we don't have anyone in the hospital right now. Uh, I would encourage you to look through the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, I don't cover them during the announcements each week, but there's a lot of good information in there. And if we have anyone that's uh, looking to help out, we are in need of some people to volunteer for the altar guild. So if you feel called to do that, or feel led to do that, please contact uh, Carol Ann or myself, and I'll get to work, Carol Ann. That's all the announcements I have. Are there any announcements from the congregation today? Yes? Uh, Pastor John, today's the last day the flag will be flying in Parkway, and I don't know if anybody out there bought flags this year. That's the field of honor, but tomorrow we'll start taking them down. So if anybody here, if you know anybody out here, Okay. Everyone hear that? It's for the flags at the Field of Dreams. Uh, if anybody purchased a flag, they'll be taking those flags down tomorrow and you can claim them. Yes? I don't have a mic. It's right there on the uh, hard. Thank everybody for uh, saying your kids to Sunday school, those of you are. Uh, we got these added devotionals for the kids to take home and one per family. We'll be getting some more in next uh, week and we'll pass them to everybody. But it's just a really nice little um, neat thing that you can read at the end of the day with your child and some little activities to do. And then also we have these Advent leaf holders that I've had here for about probably 10 years. So if anybody would like to take one and decorate it and make it your Advent wreath, that would be great. Um, and we, uh, the kids and I, were able to go to the basement uh, today and, and talk about how we're going to set up the Bethlehem Village for the Sunday on the 20th of December. And uh, they picked out some of their costumes. We're trying to figure out who will be what and, and what will fit who. And um, I think they're kind of getting interested in that. And we've got a lot of hard work down there to build the, the booths. And we'll be starting to do that probably um, talking about this Sunday. And, um, Oh, and then also the kids saw the nativity figurines down in the basement, and they said, what's that? And I said, well, those are really heavy, but we need to get them put outside sometime. And, and so they picked them up, and somebody got their dad, and they're all out there now. Um, and Miss Trish has the little bitty ones in her class, and she would love it if uh, someone would volunteer, just maybe... Um, not every Sunday, but whenever you could. No, okay. Oh, at the program. She will be meeting people to help her keep the kids in order. I'm in a room there. <laughs> there. 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 Yeah. Can help me shepherd the sheep? Okay, are there any other announcements from the congregation? Hearing none, we'll begin today with the Advent candle. Uh, we begin with a reading from Romans chapter 8. Hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word Advent means 
coming. It's the season of the church year where we are reminded of the reality of Christ coming into our world. It's a season of preparation and anticipation, not simply for the celebration of Christmas, but to recognize that hope and expectation are part of our daily life of faith. When writing on the subject of Advent, Martin Luther spoke of three different comings of Christ. The first coming was indeed when Christ was born as a child in Bethlehem, his coming in the past. The first Advent was when the eternal Son of God took on human flesh and became a living part of our world. As Christians, we also believe in the second coming of Christ, his coming in the future. At the end of all time, Christ will return to bring his kingdom to fulfillment. On that day, he will raise us up to appear before his throne of judgment. The third coming of Christ, of which Luther spoke, has no single particular time attached to it. So it is perhaps better to put no number to it at all. This other coming of Christ does not occur with portents in the heavens, nor requires of angels on high. It is an advent that is hard to see at all because it happens through the Spirit of God. This is Christ coming into the present. When our Lord enters into the hearts of everyday people in the here and now through his word and faith. Of the three, this may be the single most important advent of Christ, at least as far as our salvation is concerned because it is only through the advent of faith that the first and second comings of Christ take on meaning for us as individuals. It is when Christ enters our hearts that his presence becomes a reality for each of us in our lives. And we recognize all the many ways that God is truly with us. to stir our hearts to faith in God's word. Oh, I'm sorry. In it's hope, the back one. We light the first candle in the Advent wreath, the prophecy candle. We read in Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things. A prayer of hope. Let us pray. Dear God, as we light this candle, we hope for your coming as our good shepherd. Please gather us in your arms, feed us with your spiritual food, wipe away every tear from our eyes, and let your face shine that, that we may be served. Come, our shepherd. Amen. Let us sing the first verse of Lo, How a Rose is Grown.
our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we lay on your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now hear this good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the feast from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. 
But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Here ends the reading. We will now read responsibly Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his word, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And I say what I say to you, I say to all, stay away. The Gospel of the Lord. Here, be seated. With all the methods of communication nowadays with the news on TV. We've got Facebook, TikTok, and Parler, and MeWe, and you can go on and on and on. And I always look for 
positive things and things that are good news. And I hope that many of you, like I, have seen many videos of soldiers returning from overseas. And I especially like the ones where there's surprises because it's always so wonderful to see that love between a husband or wife or a husband and a child. I saw one recently where the troop that was returning was a deputy sheriff and he had one of his friends pull his wife and children over on a car stop. And as they're watching the officer come up, he came up the other side of the vehicle. And it was a wonderful, heartwarming thing. We've all seen them go into school to surprise their children and so forth. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that homecomings like that are always exciting. They're the exact opposite of leaving. You know, the deputy surprised his family on this day, and that same deputy a year before had to say goodbye to them. And he had to tell his children that he was going to be gone for a long while and to give them instructions on what they should do while he was gone. In our gospel lesson today, that's what Jesus is trying to tell the disciples. He's telling them in a few short days, I'm going to be leaving. He knew that he was facing the cross. And he knew in a few short days he would be separated from his followers and they would have to wait for his return. Now many times, uh, if you listen to some people, when you start talking about the end times, some people get very negative and upset about that. Because if you read Revelations, during the tribulations, it's, or tribulations, it's not going to be an exciting time to be here on earth. And some people hear about Jesus coming in judgment. And some people have only heard it, God is angry when we said, and that's all they hear. They don't pay attention to the rest of it because they get scared. But if you read our lesson today, there's no reason for fear. There's nothing in it telling us that we should be fearful of the end times or of the second coming. You know, he says that uh, Jesus will be revealed and that the Son of Man will come in great power and glory. And you know, that's not something to be afraid of, but rather it's something to be anticipated, something to look forward to. In another chapter in Matthew, it describes Jesus as a bridegroom. And you know, it's been a rare instance in my life. I can't ever remember a time that a bride was waiting for her husband to be in fear. You know, it's something that we look forward to. It's something that we look forward to with excitement and anticipation. You know, if you talk to people that have had those experiences there, uh, I guess you call them out of body experiences, people that say they've experienced death and come back, they all talk about the awe of what they saw and the wonder and how beautiful it is. I remember when Leon Nagel passed away, he hadn't been conscious for several days, but they had uh, a nurse sitting beside his bed 24-7. And she told me, uh, that nurse told me, she says, it was about six o'clock in the morning, she says, all of a sudden he woke up, she said, he sat up in bed and looked at me, and she says, he said, it's wonderful up there, and laid down and passed. What a wonderful thing to think of. We know where he went. We, it's not something we should fear. And even if we meet our Savior before he returns, it's still not something to be feared. You know, 
in our journey through this life, we can do so with hope and anticipation. I'm not saying there won't be hard times. You know, I remember the day that I finally gave my life to Christ. I was having an extremely bad day. And when my office got down my knees, I gave my life to Christ and just asked Him to take charge. And I felt the calm start at the top of my head and come all the way down through my body. And I walked out of that office and told peace. And I thought, how wonderful. This way Christians feel all the time. I'm glad to be here. But I did find out that Christianity isn't always like that. And Christ tells the disciples, you're going to face trials and tribulations. If you look at the lives they had to experience, the, the times they were in prison, and the torture that they experienced because of Christ, but they still had hope. They didn't give up. They didn't lose their faith because they knew they were going someplace better. They knew that Christ was there with them. They knew that Christ was there to support them when they needed it and to carry them through the hard times. And sometimes tribulations aren't necessarily a bad thing. They can have a positive effect on our lives. There are many times that we can learn the most during periods of trials and tribulation. You know, those don't always make sense to us, but God will bring us through it. And there's been many times things that have happened to me in my life when I sit back and look at them now, at the past, I find that God was preparing me for the ministry. You know, most of you know I didn't come into the ministry until I was 48, but I experienced so much along the way that God was preparing me for where he was taking me. And I'm sure he wanted me to arrive sooner, but I, like a lot of other people, was a little bit obstinate. Um, but from death, comes resurrection and life with our Savior. You know, we'd like to have life without experiencing death, but that it's not how things work. It's not how it works with Christ. A new life in Christ deny, demands a death in our old self. We need to give our old self back. We need to forget the way we lived before, and we need to live the life that Christ wants for us. You know, we talking this morning in our confirmation class about forgiveness. And God forgives us. And we talked a little bit about King Solomon and King David and how they had sins. But God always forgave them. God always forgives us. He knows we're going to sin. And He knows, Scripture tells us that He will forgive us and that we will have eternal life with God. It's giving of ourselves that we need to acknowledge our sin and walk with God and realize that He's preparing us for eternal life with Him. And through all of our life, through everything that may happen, through all the trials and tribulations, we need to remember that Jesus is walking with us. He's here to breathe new life into us after we expanded our last breath. Jesus, Scripture tells us He will never leave us, He'll never forsake us, and nothing can separate us from His love. You know, I told somebody last week, I told them this is my favorite time of the church year, Advent. You know, because we're looking forward, not only we're looking forward to Christmas to celebrate His birth, we also need to remember that we're looking forward to a second coming. We need to prepare for Christmas and the coming of our Lord from the foot of the cross. The cross of Christ enables us to live in hope rather than fears. It empowers us to overcome all the trials we encounter because of the cross 
we can live an abundant life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you always for your word. And Father, we pray that your word gets out to all so that they look forward with great anticipation of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to it, Father. We look forward to having eternity with you. And Father, we're just so grateful and thankful for all that you do for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. Please feel free to share the peace with those in your pew, your family. This is where we would normally receive our offering, but again, we're not passing the collection plate uh, due to the COVID restrictions. However, the collection plate is in the narthex if you feel so inclined on your way out. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the rain that you have blessed us with. Father, we pray that you will continue to bless us with rain to refresh and renew your earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of new beginnings. In these days of Advent, prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word in ever-powerful ways. By the power of your Holy Spirit, stir us to wait with joyful expectation for the coming of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, as the days grow shorter, fill our lives with the light of your love. Empower us to be beacons of the Christ light that is in us. May we share the good news of the coming, Lord, with all whom we meet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, your anger does not last forever. Hear our prayers for forgiveness and remind us of your never failing love. May we know your grace in such a way that we willingly extend it to those who have angered or hurt us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who have the coronavirus and those who are suffering from fear and anxiety. We lift them up to you, Father, and ask that you would strengthen them and see them through this illness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all of our health care workers, especially those working in nursing homes. And Father, we also pray for all the patients in all the nursing homes. And we ask, Father, that you would be with them and that they would be at peace knowing you are with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, our country continues to be in chaos. 
and we ask that you would bring peace to our country. We pray for our president and all of our leaders. We pray that they would turn to you, Father, for wisdom and guidance as they lead our country. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all those suffering from illness, addiction, and pain. We're thankful, Lord, that we have do not have anyone in the hospital 